Let's look at some other problems where we're going to have to use substitution to solve them. All right. And I noticed that uh, Mr. Lamy asked that you write those problems and put the numbers that you're substituting in for the variables in parentheses. So we'll do that on these as well, okay? So we have Q plus P plus 3 times Q. Anytime you see a number beside a variable, that's going to tell you to multiply. This is the coefficient and this is the variable, okay? That together they become efficient and you don't have to write Q plus Q plus Q. You can just write 3Q. Okay, so let's solve that, this problem. We have Q and where the Q is we're going to put a 6. So we have 6 plus 3 plus, and I'm going to go ahead and put these in parentheses because Mr. Lamy had that on there, and then 3 times 6, okay? So what are we going to do first? If we go back to our order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or parentheses exponents. Well, we have parentheses, but there's just single numbers there. So we don't really have anything inside parentheses to work together. Parentheses exponents multiply and divide from left to right. We have a multiplication. So we have 6 plus 3 plus, and 3 times 6, there's our multiplication, is 18. Then we just have an addition problem here. We have 6 plus 3 plus 18. Because all of those are just addition, because each of the operations here is addition, we can just go ahead and add straight across or in any order. And the reason we can add in any order, if you remember, is the commutative property of addition. And basically it just says you can add as long as you're adding, you can add any of these numbers in any order and you're still going to get the same answer. You might want to add 6 plus 3 and then add your 18, or you might want to add 18 plus 6 plus 3, but you're still going to get the same answer. I know that 6 plus 3 is 9, and 9 plus 18 is 27, because I'm just looking at three, three nines there. Okay, and so that's how we solve that problem. Let's look at the next one here. The next one has some parentheses in it and we're going to substitute, okay, 7 plus y. Well, what is y? y in this case is negative 5. Definitely going to put that negative 5 in parentheses. Minus parentheses 5 minus z. Well, z is negative 8, so I'm going to put negative 8 in parentheses and then close those parentheses, okay? So if we look at our um, order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, we notice that we have parentheses and inside those parentheses we actually have an operation to do. Now it's very important here that we remember our um, rules for adding and subtracting integers. To subtract integers we're always going to add the opposite. So instead of minus a negative 8, that's like two negatives in English, I ain't got no money means I have money, okay? So 5 plus 8 is 13, so I'm going to go ahead and write that again. 7 plus a negative 5 minus 13, and I dropped the parentheses there because I saw this problem and the answer was 13. Now in this case, we cannot just go in any order because it's not all addition like the previous problem. We have addition and subtraction. But we're going to, so in addition and subtraction, in order of operations, we move from left to right left to right, just like we read. So we have 7 plus a negative 5. And the rules for adding integers, which I know you know, but sometimes forget, when we add integers that are different, one's negative, one's positive, we're going to actually subtract 7, subtract 5, which is 2, and apply the sign of the number with the greater absolute value. In this case, the 7 is positive, so we have more positives than negatives, so it's just going to be positive 2. And then we have 2 minus 13. It's like I have two dollars but I owe you thirteen dollars so how many dollars do I still owe you? Okay, and this is the same thing happens we're going to add an opposite here that's how you could you can do that or you can just do that with them um, thinking of I uh, have two dollars and I owe you thirteen how much can I pay you and how much do I still owe you? Well you subtract thirteen minus two is eleven and in this case the thirteen is the number that has the greatest absolute value, so it ends up negative 11. Now, this problem I'd really like for you to make sure that you check in the calculator. 
especially when we have those negative and positive numbers. Let's go ahead and clear it out so we can see that. And put your negative numbers in parentheses. So we have 7 plus a negative uh, 5. I didn't push my 5. Close that parentheses minus parentheses 5 minus and I'm going to put that negative 8 in parentheses again and then close the parentheses and let's push equals. Oh, I have a syntax error so I must have put something in there wrong. Let's clear that out and try it again. Let me try it without the parentheses and see what happens. 7 plus negative 5 minus parentheses 5 minus negative 8. I might have hit the minus button for that. Parentheses equals. And we get our negative 11. Okay? So it, so in that case, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I hit the subtraction button twice or what I did. Let me try it again. Plus negative. I might have hit the subtraction button there. And let me go back here and put parentheses before I do that. Negative 5. If you hit the subtraction button instead of the negative button, that will mess your problem up there. Parentheses 5 minus, and then put parentheses negative 8, parentheses, and the parentheses. Yeah, um, that's what I had done. And I hope that guys remember, remember that mistake that I made because I hit the subtraction button twice instead of my negative button. So that's easy to do. Remember that your negative button is down here for your negative 8 and your negative 5 and your subtraction button, of course, you know where that is. But, but I made that mistake, and that's why it gave me a syntax error on that problem. Okay? All right. So let's go to the next one. And this next problem, we have all variables and then some, uh, and, and even an exponent problem here. We have a, which is 20, plus 20 plus c squared. Oh, this one's going to be nice for us, isn't it? Because c is negative 9, so we have negative 9 squared. Now, here you must remember your negative sign, all right? So if I'm going to write that out, I'm going to get negative 9. If I'm going to factor this exponent, negative 9 times negative 9. A negative times a negative is a positive, and so that would be positive 81. Okay. Now, if you don't type this correctly in the calculator, you might get the wrong answer. So let's do this. Negative 9 to the second power, and what do we get? Negative 81. Okay. See that? Negative 9 to the second power. What we need to do, because the calculator reads that as the opposite of 9 squared. Well, we know that any, you know, if we have 13, the opposite of 13 is negative 13. Your calculator is actually reading that as the opposite of 9 squared or negative 1 times 9 squared. So to get the right answer of positive 81, you have to put that negative 9 in parentheses. Okay? Put your negative 9 in parentheses and then square it, and then you'll get the right answer. This is a very common mistake, easy to do. Your calculator is only as smart as the person inputting, inputting the information, okay? So remember that when we're raising a negative number, like negative 9 squared, we know that a negative times a negative is a positive. We have to put it in parentheses. Let's do it again. So I'm going to say parentheses negative 9 parentheses to the second power or squared and I get my positive 81. Remember your calculator says negative 1 times 9 squared and that's how you get your negative 81 there. So be careful, be careful, okay? That's why it's important, I think, to understand, to have this kind of understanding over the calculator too. All right, calculator can help you and can check and you know when you don't want to divide a, a, a higher number you know and you just want to do some things quickly or you don't want to multiply three digits times two digits that's all well and good but you have to have this understanding that what this is saying to you what this power is saying is negative nine times negative nine and then you know your rules a negative times a negative is a positive okay so let's solve this problem we've already done the first step that negative 9 squared is 81 so we have 20 plus 20 plus positive 81 okay and then do you remember that property we talked about before 
the commutative property. The commutative property addition says I can add in any order. Well, probably what I would do is say 80 plus 20 is 100, plus 20 is 120, plus 1 is 121. Okay? Or you can say 20 plus 20 is 40, and 40 plus 80 is 121. But that's your answer. Let's see if we can put this correctly in the calculator. I'm going to clear it out and remember what you have to do there. Put your negative 9 in parentheses and then square it. So we have 20 plus 20 plus parentheses negative 9 parentheses to the second power and equals. And there's our 121. Okay? Here are some more example problems for us to try. And let's try these together. We have 4J, and this time J is 4, minus H, I mean, yeah, minus parentheses H minus 1. All right, so let's do these three, since we've done several already with, with uh, the long way, writing the problem out. Let's do these with the calculator. Everywhere you see a J, you're going to put a 4, and everywhere you see an H, you're going to put a 2. No problem there, right? Okay, so we have 4 times j, which is 4, subtract, parentheses, h is 2, minus 1, parentheses, equals 15. Okay, so that's the answer to this problem. And you know, I'm just uh, OCD enough to say, oh, I want to work that out. I'm a silly math teacher, you know, so that's how that works. So I'm going to put 4 times 4, minus 2 minus 1. I'm going to say 4 times 4 is 16, minus 2 minus 1, which is 1, and there's my answer. Okay? And that might be a good thing for us to do, is to have you solve it on the calculator, and I'll solve it using um, just substitution and write the problem out so we can you can check me using the calculator. Okay? So on the next problem we have z, which is negative 10, I would go ahead and put that negative number in parentheses just to be safe. Negative 10 plus 3 plus x, which is negative 5. It's nice to put that in parentheses so I don't get my addition and subtraction sign or negative sign messed up. Subtract 19. Okay. So I'm just going to work this problem from left to right while you put it in the calculator. Okay, and you see if I got that right. I got negative 31, so I hope I hope that I got that right for you. Let's check it out here. I've got to move this paper around just a little bit. So we have negative 10. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Negative 10 plus 3 plus, and x is negative 5. I'm going to put that in parentheses. And remember to hit, my, hit your negative key down here rather than rather than your subtraction key. Um, subtract y and y is 19. Let's see if we got that right. Negative 31. Okay. All right. You check me and I'll work this out. And you can, you, if you feel comfortable working it out, you certainly can do that. Or if you like to use a calculator, you can do that as well. Okay. So here we have y plus z squared. Ooh. We have, this means the quantity of this, this whole answer, and then we're going to square it. We're going to raise it to the second power. So y is 2 and z is 5 and then we're going to square it. We're not squaring just the 5 or just the 2. We're going to add these two together and then square the answer. Minus 4. Let's make sure I've copied that down right. Sometimes I make mistakes doing that too. Okay, so y is 2, z is 5. We're going to square it. Alright, in this case Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and you do it on the calculator. All right, let's see if we got that right. 
we're going to put this in parentheses. Parentheses, parentheses are very important here because if you do not put them, your calculator will just square the 5 and get 25 there, and 25 plus 2 would be 26 minus 4, so, um, which would be 22. So let's make sure that we put the parentheses here and then square what's inside the parentheses. So we have parentheses, 2 plus 5, parentheses, then the squared button minus 4 equals. And we got 45, and that's the correct answer. All right, I enjoyed doing this with you guys today and helping, helping you learn a little bit about order of operations, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. I hope you understand it quite well. And, um, of course, you can ask Mr. Lamey any questions. And now I have one final question for you. Who am I? I can give you some clues. I'm probably pretty close by. I may have taught you in middle school. But I'll let you know who I am. One of my favorite colors is purple. So I'll write who I am in purple. Most of you, if you know me, you know me as Mrs. E. Okay? And Mrs. E is short for Easterling. Okay? Have a great day and um, learn that math. It's really, really important. Help you be a successful person. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.